Hi everyone, I'm Lauren Dockett with Psychotherapy Networker and here with me today is Britt Rathbone. Welcome Britt. Thank you. Britt's here to talk to us about teens. He's worked exclusively with teens and their families for his entire career and he has a special interest in difficult to treat adolescents and teens. He's written two books for professionals as well as a book for parents called Parenting a Teen Who Has Intense Emotions. I think we might have met a few of those over the course of the <laughs> right. um, And for the new issue of the magazine, Britt and his co-author Julie Barron wrote a piece, here is our new issue, um, on helping teens make good decisions. Not an easy feat as any therapist working with teens knows, partly because you're in a difficult position, aren't you, as a therapist? trying to focus on the teen's needs when families and teachers and others also have a stake in how a teen behaves and feels. So Britt, off the bat, let's start with the question of confidentiality. Are teens entitled to it? Should they have an expectation of it? How can a therapist address the issue of confidentiality with them? Yeah, so it's yes and no, right? Like, it comes down to state law, ultimately, and many of the state laws don't give teenagers confidentiality, um, which means parents are entitled to the information that they get, uh, that the therapist gets in the therapy session. However, no teen is going to open up to their therapist if they think that that information is going to go back to the parents, mm -hmm. without at least without their permission or input or that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So what we find is that the best thing to do is really talk this issue over with parents and teens right at the beginning so that everybody knows what the rules are, if we're going to relax the rules, get the parents' buy-in around that. Most parents, I find, are willing to give me, the therapist or the therapist, the, the clinical judgment to make that decision about what to share with parents parents or not. And it's reassuring to tell parents that no matter what, even if the child doesn't want us to, we will always tell them about issues around safety or, um, you know, lift, risk to life or risk to other people's lives, that kind of thing. Okay. So, so um, okay, here are some issues then. Let's, let's talk about maybe a tricky scenario and, and you tell me to call it here. You got a teenager telling you that um, he or she is going to go do something risky, like sneak out of the house or hook up with someone or, or do drugs, um, you're not going to go to the parents. What is your role in this moment? How do you respond? Well, I wouldn't say we wouldn't necessarily go to parents. I mean, it's going to be a clinical judgment okay. uh, with every situation. Um, but the first thing is that the fact that the teenager is telling us about this in the session is great because that means they're talking about it with us before they're doing it. Where I don't want to be is, you know, on the street corner trying to talk them out of it when they're on their way out of the house. You know, the fact that they're in my office, it's a calm moment. We can talk it through. So there's a number of things that we're going to do. Number one is that the therapist has to manage their own anxiety. There's a lot of behaviors that are normative, meaning like typical for teenagers, like mm -hmm. drug experimentation, um, sexual experimentation, that we know from the statistics happens very, very frequently with kids. And the outcomes, it doesn't mean that you're going to have a problem with a lot of those behaviors. Now, you have to know your adolescent, obviously, to have a good, good judgment about this. So getting a hold of your own anxiety and not panicking, number one. Okay. And then being able to kind of go through it with the young person. So if you know what the young person's goals are, what is it they're working on in therapy, what, what do they want to get out of therapy, then we try to link this in some way to their goals. You know, so if the goal is, like, they want to have social connection, and that's why they're sneaking out of the house, for example, mm -hmm. we might think about what are some other ways that you could get social connection without potentially destroying the relationship with your parents or being punished or, you know, so how do we kind of thread that needle, get them what they're looking for, but not necessarily bring about the consequences that might come from the risky behavior, if it truly is risky. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes we want to let them just experience things on their own, depending on the level of risk, obviously. And, and let, then we can kind of talk it over. You know, so if it turns out that it wasn't a good idea and it didn't turn out so well, then we have an opportunity in therapy to go through that and help them learn from the experience. Okay. Um, you say in your piece that a therapist just can't, can't control a teen's behavior, but a therapist can teach skills that do improve judgment and self-control. So briefly tell me how you do this. Well, I mean, there's a there's hundred ways, right? But I'll give you some the top ones. The, so what we try to do in therapy is really try to understand the function of the behavior so, and get the adolescent to understand the function of the behavior. So why is it you want to do this? Why is it that you want to smoke marijuana? Why is it you want to skip school? Why is it you want to cheat on the test? 
right? Because if we can link that to what it is their ultimate goal is, then we can go back to, as I said a moment ago, figuring out how to get that goal met in a more effective way. And we're also helping them learn, kind of get a handle on the way they think, right? So that, like, when I have this thought, I have this urge, and then I, I do this behavior, which may not always pay off. So being able to kind of walk through that with them and break the different pieces down and help them how to think about how to make better decisions at each step in that chain, thought, feeling, and, and uh, urge, and then behavior helps them make better decisions down the road. Okay, terrific. Brett, thank you so much. So useful. Absolutely. Okay, take care. My pleasure.